today I'm going to try to start assembling the bed. So, got the lumber. I have some lumber on hand. I'm going to try to piece this together. I'm kind of have a plan, but I'm mostly going to wing part of it, I guess. But just trying to get it started is the main thing. So it's kind of intimidating, but I think once I get going, I'll be able to plan it better. I'm more of a visualized learner. So... We're going to try to get that rolling and then uh, we'll kind of see where it goes from there as we go along. So my plan is to have a main base here that's going to be a pull out drawer and that'll be about 14 inches tall drawer and the bed with the mattress should be about 20 inches and I'm going to go back to the tank that's about 75 inches there which is about a full-size mattress and then I'm gonna come out to pretty close to the cabinet it should be about a 10 inch pull out section so I can actually extend the bed to full size while still keeping this in place and having an actual walkway and then I'll be able to open up my cabinets as well which I think is important when you're inside the van and you're contained so I'm going to attach it to the floor using some cross members, which is just three quarter inch whiteboard. And I want to be able to affix it to the floor so it's sturdy enough, isn't going to move anywhere. And it's going to be a hinge top as well, so it'll open up. I can access actually under the bed and the drawer at any time when I'm just in the van. Not sure how long I'm going to make that drawer yet. I might make two separate sections. I'll do the drawer that pulls out most of the way and then I'll have just a little open storage section up in there. For the slats, I'm going to use also this three quarter inch whiteboard. This is five and a half inch long. I think I'm just going to cut it in two, use that as the slats. I'm going to start with building the base. So it's going to be a box like structure and that'll provide the framing necessary for the top to lay down and open up and uh, for the drawer access so i need to start with that so i need to get these two by fours cut down to size and get that framed up i'm going to use pocket holes to attach everything and get everything set up that way so it's nice and tight and clean looking so here goes nothing uh, we're going to start cutting stuff down. Alright, so now I'm going to cut this three quarter inch whiteboard by three and a half inch wide. That's going to go in the bottom to actually affix it to the floor of the van. And these are going to be 16 and a half inch pieces, which will give me a total width of 19 and a half for the main width of the initial box. Slammed up. So this way, tie in on both ends. This side of the wheel well, back side, the middle, and then this side of the wheel well are where I have joists going across so I'll be able to tie that in. It might be a bit overkill to have one in the middle but I just want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. It is going to be a heavy chore with equipment and stuff in it so I'm going to do as much as I can to actually tie it down to the frame and where I have the most support in the van. Now I'm going to use a Craig Jag to tie in from the outside in because this is going to be tied from the inside so it should keep that stable inside and then it'll actually counterpoint to this one going in from out here so it should draw everything together so i'm going to put it from this two by four into the length two by four on the outside on both sides of this then i'll kind of have my little u shape and then i can start tying it in with the bottom pieces using the craig jig on the bottom going up and in so i ended up getting one of the better ones. Um, it's been helpful so far with creating my first cabinet. And it's about 150 bucks, 
maybe splurged a bit there's cheaper ones out there but this one's a really nice setup clamps down and everything um, so the correct depth for going 2x4 to 2x4 is one and a half inch it's got these handy little markers on here so you just set the depth there clamp it in and you drill your pilot hole and then you drill what will be two and a half inch pocket hole screws so I'm gonna use that blue one in the middle a little bit more heavy duty for those who have never worked with one of these before so I'm tying in from here to here so I'm going to lay the board in this way I'm gonna line it up with this edge make sure it's flush just lock that in. Then you're just going to take your bit, line it up in this first hole. I'm going to do one and two here. It's about two inches or so. So from the end of the board, it's about two and a half inches and an inch in, so that's perfect. This is going to go right into here, tie into this board here. So I'll do that, both these sides, get all four done, get these tied into these long boards. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of using the wall for leverage, just so I can make sure I get a good contact point, getting everything lined up here, and just driving this in. My filming setup is not ideal, but what I need to do now is get pocket holes in all of these pieces on the bottom. It doesn't really matter either side now, as long as you're getting into the same sides. And then we're going to tack these in to these pieces here. So go ahead and get that ready. Since the piece I'm putting the pocket holes in is only three quarter inch, you're going to use the three quarter inch setting on the drill bit. So you can see I have it marked, maybe you can't see. Marked there. Then I have an arrow showing which side that board has to be on. So in this case, the back part of the board is going to be there. It's going to go back to here. Up here, since that's in front of the wheel well, I just put an arrow this way, which means the edge of my board will go here, fill in here, and then back here, it'll just line up with the 2x4, just like this one will. So like that. Okay, let's get those attached. Okay, I flipped it over, got it clamped into place, so now I'm going to drive in all of these pocket screws over here into that side. Now we have to build the top section so it's just a square piece. I'm going to use 2x4s ripped in half and I'll use 2x4s uh, to connect those and get that main base. And once again we're going to throw Craig jig holes in both sides of the 2x4s and go into the ripped 2x4s in the side. So for this we'll be using the uh, one and a half inch setting. To fasten these boards, using the two and a half inch. On the base piece, I decided to put just a half inch board in between the two legs just to keep it more stabilized. This isn't going to be load bearing at all or anything. I just wanted to make sure that I could keep these spread out. Well, I put a split two by four on the top back here. Had a two by four for support underneath that. Used pocket holes to tie that all in from the top there, 
these two into the bottom piece in there and then the pocket hole on top. To be honest, I'm not super happy with how square it is, but the lumber is all twisted because it's 2 by 4 so I'm going to try to attach the hinges to my top piece and just see how it falls and see how that will lay on there. Um, I think it will be okay. I'm going to try to use four hinges, one on the edge, one middle, one middle of there, and then one on the back end up down there. So I'm going to tie that in, and we'll see how that lies. I'll probably put a support here. I don't think I'll need to go all the way across, but we'll see. All right, so I've got it clamped together. I'm just going to start moving down the line and putting these hinges in. Now what I have to do is cut the slats for the top and the slide out shelf. So I have, these are is five and a half inch wide, three quarter inch thick. So I'm going to actually cut these down to size. I'm going to rip off a quarter inch on each side and then I'm going to cut it in half. That way it'll be about two and a half inch slats on each side both for the slide out and for the actual base where the drawer falls on and everything so that's what we have to do now get this all cut up uh, ripped down and then we'll get those slats installed now I'm gonna move over to the table saw and rip these down it's gonna try to get flat edges on both sides so I'm gonna rip just a tiny bit off here flip it rip a tiny bit off here and then I'll cut it in half and I think I have seven of those that should give me just over what I need So here's kind of what it's going to look like on the base piece. Just the slats about every two and a half inches so the next slats can fit inside those. And I'm going to use two screws to attach into each side here. Just have to make sure they're even all the way down. I use three and a half inch pieces on both ends just to get over the two by four on that side and cover that side. Get that a nice flat surface there. And so now we'll just have to screw these in I want to make sure that I'm going to test a couple first to make sure that my gaps are okay so that everything will kind of slide and not bind up that way so let's get that done and then we'll move on to the sliding piece I've been in a bit of conundrum because I've been trying to decide if I should flip the leg around to run parallel with that one or have it like this and run outward it would give me a little more space up top here to actually lay the, the actual couch portion of it. And I was just worried about how far my cabinets were going to open out. And with this, they are going to run into to that piece. So they aren't going to be able to open all the way. So I guess it's either do it this way, get a little more space, and have to redo the cabinet doors to open as a bifold, or I'm going to have to sacrifice space, move that around, get new caster wheels that will fit on a smaller piece, which I just haven't been able to find very easily. And basically if I run it like this, I'll run a piece from the inside here to the outside here that's going to be your dimension because it's going to fall short of that i'm going to have a piece under here locking that in so it will slide out and it hits that as the backing and then it will stop here to not allow it to go any further so i don't know 
I've been mulling this over too long. I think I'm just gonna go with it like this. All right, I guess got all the slide out pieces cut to length. Now I got to rip off the sides, cut them in half, and those will be ready to put on. Okay. Well, somewhat reluctantly, but maybe necessary, maybe not. I'm going to go through, sand all these edges down with 220, and just so it's a smoother surface. And then what I'm also going to do is apply some of this finishing wax just to keep it a little more free-flowing free and moving um, when it's tied up against one another. There's going to be little gaps here, I'm thinking like eighth inch, but since it will be able to shift, I want it to be able to glide off of each one of those pieces. So get that sanded, and it's just going to be a quick pass. I don't think I need much. I'm just going to use my, I'm not going to hand sand or anything. I'm just going to run over it quick with a, a square sander. So try that. Now I cut my legs which will be the front, which will slide out. Um, I just used a test piece to put my wheel on there. And I'm gonna trim off that like three quarters inch just to try to get a little more clearance for my, my cabinet doors and stuff. But also cut this split two by four to length, which will be this front edge here, which will slide out. Um, so I'm just getting that kind of set up there just so I can start to get an idea how my slats are going to line up. Okay, now I'm going to put these casters on the bottom of the ripped down 2x4. So I took 3 quarters inch off that. These are 1 and a quarter inch drywall screws. They're a little bit finer thread. A bit more flush. Who knows if this will work. put the flat side back and then I'll have the cross piece lay on top of this go all the way across and that should be easier to roll out so keep going with those I'm going to start attaching the slats now to the main base so using some of these longer ones are the spacers since those will be the ones affixed to the wheels that come out and pull out Gonna just alternate, do that, one of those, get the spacing right, tie the next one in, get the spacing, and so on. So let's uh, get going on that. I'm gonna pre drill the holes on the top, do two of each, or two on each board, and then that should suffice for each of those, and just make sure they won't crack with the pre drilling and the, the countersink bit. First thing I'm going to do with this is run off my flat edge off the back. I know this whole thing is not totally square, but at least if I run this same line off the back, I should be able to keep it at least fairly in line all the way down. Just so I don't have any issues later with it binding. So I'm just using this back edge. And lining it up and like I said it's not totally flush but I just got to try to get it as square as I can even though the top isn't totally square so we'll be right there okay so I get that lined up So that's squared up on my edges. So I just got it clamped down. Now I'll run two screws on each side. Okay, so I'll just run my countersink bit down the middle here. Back. 
And these are one and a quarter inch. They're drywall screws, but they have a little bit tighter thread, so I thought these would, these would work a bit better. Now what I'm actually doing is trying to get the spacing correct in the next one, so I'm using like an eighth inch flat edge ruler here. Remember, I'm not attaching this one down yet. I'm just trying to get the spacing correct for the next one. There, so now I have a good clean eighth inch line. I'm hoping that'll be enough. And then you come in with the next piece. Same thing. Now I got this end clamped in. I just move the slide down here and then I'm going to put just a little bit of pressure on and get my two screws put in there. Okay, then I mean, that should hold it in place enough. You can come back down with the ruler down here. You can make it look pretty if you want, if it's gonna bother you. Kinda will bother me, I'm sure, but so far, so good. Let's keep moving with that. Also, what I'm doing is marking here. So I know that this piece here, even if it's a little bit off, this will be the piece that will slot in here. That way I know exactly where this piece goes, how it will fit the best uh, with the spacers that I used. So just keep marking these so the two goes to the two, one goes to the one, three will go to the three, and so on. Since I did kind of change up my end pieces after I cut these all out, um, it changed up the measurements a little bit. So for the middle, I did have to use two smaller pieces. That will be the slide out pieces. And then I have the short piece tendering all that. So it'll still have fine supports, like one and three quarter inch each of these. So that should be fine there. Um, just wanted to note that because it does look a little bit different here. But now we'll just uh, keep on moving down the line. Now that I kind of got that figured out, I can just keep going down this line and, and follow my follow my path. got all the short slats screwed into place and it seems to be fairly well spaced obviously using that technique it should be pretty even across the way so once we actually start getting in our slide out piece into place I'll make sure that that spacing is good again and that it will be even all the numbers will match up with one another so that that didn't move there won't be that variable so now that these are in place I'm gonna put some of this finishing wax on it just in the middle uh, between the slats to kind of give it a little extra lubrication when I get the other slats on just to make it slide a bit easier so I just run over that with a rag quick just putting it on the sides so I'm just kind of taking the wax just putting a little bit on like an old rag or a sock in my case and then just rub that across now I cut the piece that's gonna actually support the slats that go out so it holds that underneath there keeps it more stable allows it to guide along there 
So I did it at one and three quarter inch wide. It's about 67 three quarter inches long on the width. So this will just fall in there. And then all the slats attach to the top through there. So I'm gonna apply some more of that wax just to this side. Since that'll be the side making contact with here, I just want that to be a nice, smooth, easy gliding surface.